Hey everybody, Bob Chick back with another edition of the Voice of Bodybuilding and Who Better, but my co-host once again, the fit rock star, IFBB superstar, and any other thing I can think of, Isabel Terrell. What's up? Hey, what's up, Bob? My chest is sore from using your max out power. Ah. I should say actually my chesticles. I, you could say that, but then I'm gonna have to kick you out of here. Yeah, you're kicking me out. You know I hate those stupid expressions, but. We'll get into that in a little bit. Okay. As you can see, uh, Isabel has done her homework with a book full of notes, and I have nothing. <laughs> so that's okay. We're going to let you lead this segment. So lots of action over the weekend, right? The IFBB Pro League train continues this time to the land of pharaohs. That's right. And we had Regan Grimes winning. Ah, my man. Yeah, I'm really excited for him. It's about time he looked phenomenal. I think yep. he was actually heavier at this show than he was at the Legion. That could be now. You got to remember now. That's the first, the Legion is the first time that that Regan has worked with uh, Milos mm -hmm. and his crew, and I know manager Matt. You know he's got a hand in all that. So Regan completely redesigns his team, comes out smoking at the Legion, just comes up short. No pun intended. <laughs> See what I did there, yeah. right? Sean Clarita taking that one as we all know by now over him and Sergio, but. Not to be denied, this is the second year in a row. I got to give it to Regan, man. He's got a good team around him. Second year in a row, he won Romania uh, last year, correct? Mm -hmm. And that gave him the early qualification. Unfortunately, because he had the wrong program, it didn't elicit a, a good response at the Olympia. But he quickly made the switch, got his team together, great showing at the Legion, and an even better showing here in Egypt. He comes out the winner. Early qualification. He's actually good till the Olympia now. Now, didn't him and manager Matt have some technical flight issues? Oh, God, yeah. Uh, big like shout-out to manager Matt and, and the crew. Uh, uh, these guys, uh, I was keeping posted along the way. That's the good good thing about the Internet now is you can you can follow somebody's Instagram and see him coming and going. So the whole time he's keeping it posted, they had actually changed flights in midair. And by that, I mean, like, like the next flight they had to figure out because something got messed up, right. got canceled, yeah. whatever. They're going to end up in... God knows when where. COVID test expired or something. Had to redo another one. You know, this stuff's getting just more loony and ridiculous as it goes. But somehow they got it. Listen, here's the thing about manager Matt. Okay, anybody who knows him, he makes stuff happen. That's yes, what he, he does. does. Yeah. He will find a way to make it happen. But he got them there. No luggage, but but they were there. Um, but you know what? You need very little. When I traveled for when I was competing, I everything got you know uh, put in. You know, you're going to put in for your luggage. Of course, you got a lot of clothes and different things. But I always brought on with me, on the carry-on, my trunks, my oil, and my music. Yeah. And I figure if, if the shit completely hits the fan, you can still compete. Right. Because food you're going to buy there for the most part, right? You're going to bring whatever you have to for the flight. And then pretty much you're going to buy whatever you need to get fresh, you know. And by the way, for those always rem uh, remembering the old days when people would come up uh, with, with food poisoning at the end, you know, and all these things, oh, I, I'm sure it was just an excuse, you know, as why he didn't do very well. No, it's actually a thing because a lot of people pack their food for, for a couple of days. Right. Problem is it doesn't always keep or you're traveling or it gets lost in, you know, in, in luggage. You know, your food ends up in Minneapolis or something and you got nothing. But you know what? Fish, chicken, any of that kind of stuff, proteins, they don't last that long. So you know what? It wasn't uncommon for somebody to end up with food poisoning or something because, you know, you can't trust what you're going to get at a restaurant. So you got food poisoning? I never did, no. Oh, okay. Thank Me God. Neither. Actually, I did for one show. It was before the 89 U.S., but it, was, it wasn't like the day before. It was like a week out, uh, which was bad enough. But, but, uh, but uh, you know, I got the meds. I overcame it. Everything was fine. I ended up taking second that year. Hmm. And a close finish with Johnny Morant. Johnny Morant. Huh? That is, yeah. Uh, so with Regan, though, it's really awesome because, again, he's only been working with Milos for three weeks. Yeah. So can you imagine what he would look like in a year for the Olympia? Well, this is cool because, again, smart play on Regan's part. You got to give it to him. Right. He's got a qualification. We got 14 months to the Olympia because it's back in December next year, okay? Week before Christmas, back in Vegas. Mm -hmm. uh, as anybody saw that last announcement that me and Big Jake put out um, about the, uh, we'll call it the official announcement, even though it's kind of been out there. <laughs> um, but me and Big Jake put out one at the Legion telling everybody back in Vegas on the strip, Zappos Theater at Planet Hollywood. This is going to be cooler than cool. But because it's in December and this year it was in October, you pick up a few extra months. Regan Grimes has over a year that he literally does not have to compete unless he chooses to. Um, and he's dialed it in twice in two weeks. So if, if I'm running this camp, this kid's just growing for the next 12 months. Well, Milo says in three years he could be a Mr. Olympia. 
So I totally agree with that. Yeah. He's got a beautiful package. Good looking guy. What's with you in the package thing? I like big packages and I cannot lie. I, no, you can't, certainly. Mm -hmm. The uh you know what? I, I don't disagree with what Milo said. Yeah. He could he could be a Mr. Olympia contender or Mr. Olympia. I mean he I think he could be in that position with that physique if he can put on about another 20 pounds. Now, and saying that, mm -hmm. we had, of course, uh, Big Rami making a guest posing appearance, you know, after the Olympia, and he looked phenomenal. Well, he's in his hometown. He, he, listen, he is a god there. He is a god there. In there. He, bigger than Dr. Hawass, who everybody knows I'm very fond of. But, um, yeah, Big Rami obviously was there, you know, making an appearance, as he should. He's Mr. Olympia two times over. And Flex Lewis was there. Uh, and there's a picture of man. Flex and Rami. You can see the big size. I mean, there's... Flex is right up there. So I hear Flex will be at the Olympia next year. Well, in the open. yeah, I, at I, the Olympia is one thing. On stage at the Olympia is what we want to see. I want to see that. Making his open, uh, we won't call it his debut. He actually competed in the open years ago for people that want to look it up and did very, I think he was third. You have to look that one up. You can fact check me. I will but fact check you. I'm almost positive because uh, I think he beat um, Hadi Chupan huh? at that show. Uh, but he didn't win the show. I, somebody else said, I, now I'm going to have to look it up, of course, to see. But he has competed in the Open before and fared very well. Now, this was years ago. Mm -hmm. The Flex Lewis today can easily... Listen, Hadi Chupan was third and arguably could have been second or first, right? Flex Lewis has beaten Hadi Chupan. So, I mean, where does that put him in the mix? Mm -hmm. uh, but that would be welcome uh, competition. He has such a great physique. Love Flex Lewis's physique. Well, listen... You gotta, uh, you know, get that hay going while the sun's shining, right? I mean, it's no time like the present, and bodybuilders do not age like fine wine. They don't get better with age, oh, as boy. you well know. Listen, I'm bringing uh, Rusty Jeffers, man. Rusty Jeffers. I'm gonna give a shout out to him because again, he looks great for his age. He's what, sixty? Close to it? Fifty uh, nine? I know he's he's a few years older than me. Yeah. Uh, listen, Rusty did bring it. Uh, looked absolutely fantastic. Won his class. Just lost the overall uh, at the uh, Legion, as, as uh, Chris Minnis had the, in all the uh, Masters categories there right. for these people to compete in, which is great. It gives them a platform, but got to give it up for Rusty, man. He looked fantastic. Well, I want to give a shout-out to Mohamed Shaban, which came in second. He came in second at the uh, Egypt show. Yeah. He looks phenomenal. This guy has got an incredible package, and again, he trains with Milos. Mm -hmm. So, way to go, Mohamed. Let me tell you, Mo is one of those guys who has quietly snuck up on everybody. Oh, yeah. Um, he's played exceedingly well this year. He's done three or four shows, I believe. And he was up there, uh, I think he took second, I want to say, to Nathan Deasha mm -hmm. at one of the shows. Uh, and the year before he did well, too. But he's he's a guy that you don't, he doesn't get a lot of play. But he's 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 kind of worked his way up into there. He's a contender. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and a great showing here, like you say, second place uh, over Samson Dauda from the UK. I've seen Samson now because... He competed in the first year that we put on the the uh, shows in the UK uh, when we, when we started up a few years after the a few years ago after the split. Package. Another time with the pack. What is it with you with these packages? You need to get a job with FedEx. Give me another word to use That's instead of you, package. He's got a nice uh, physique. physique. I don't know. We'll, we'll come up with that. You can use package if you want. Okay. Um, but he is really put together. He he really has a very complete physique. He does. If he can just dial in his conditioning a little bit better, and he's been getting. He's better than he was a couple of years ago. A couple of years ago, he was another, and, and I mean no disrespect, another Lionel Bayeki. Lionel has got a phenomenal physique. Mm -hmm. um, again, arguably could have won a few shows and could have done really well at the Olympia, but he always shows up a little soft. Mm -hmm. Again, put together better than most, better than 95% of the guys, but always soft, and especially from the back. Um, but he was kind of following that suit until this year, and he, he seems to have finally dialed it in. And he hasn't won, but he's been right there. He's been runner up to Nathan. Uh, speaking of Nathan, what's up with Nathan? I think he's doing Prague next week. So the Prague show is back on, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was there a few years ago. I've actually hosted that a few times. Uh, me and my wife were there, Tasha, uh, some years ago. We actually took in the Lady Gaga concert in Damn, Prague. That's awesome. Didn't you get her a suite? This, the Gaga suite? suite? Yeah, we were like in the presidential suite, you know, this and that. Um, no, the boys took care of me over there. They knew it was our anniversary, so they... they uh, so they, here's the here's the funny part, right? They had this big surprise set up. They found out it was our anniversary somehow. I didn't tell them, but somehow they figured it out, whether it's Facebook or something. I don't know. And she's a big Gaga fan. Well, she? but here's the thing, right? Before we get to that point, the guys come up and they're like, hey, listen, we got a surprise for you because we heard it was your anniversary this week. And he's like, oh, yeah, you know. So listen, we got you two tickets 
to the finals of the hockey game this weekend. And I'm like, oh, that's great. You know, that sounds exciting. Yeah, and you can see the, the look just drained off their face. You're like, oh, you don't like hockey really? I'm like, well, it's not really my thing, but my wife really doesn't follow. You know, she'll watch football or baseball, but hockey, no. And they're like, oh, geez, yeah, that's too bad. I mean, you know, we got the presidential box, right? This and that. This was like you because they own the arena. Right, wow. They own the team, right? So he goes, uh, he goes, well, that's all right. But, I mean, if you don't want to go to that, I mean, I got, uh, we got a couple of Lady Gaga tickets. And I'm like, whoa, what are you kidding me? Yeah, that should have been the first Yeah, like that, was, like that was the way off, like, you know, you know, here's the hockey ticket. You know, like that was gold. But a nice consolation okay. prize. I'm like, right, we'll, we'll take the Gaga tickets. What are you kidding me? So how did you surprise her? Did you like blindfold her? I, don't, her I didn't even tell her actually until we got to the place. So, so I, I didn't tell her where we were going mm -hmm. until we pulled up. And then, of course, I got these gigantic Lady Gaga live, you know, like the whole thing. So needless to say, it was a great time. She's smiling. But Prague was, was very cool. We went and saw the castle there and all that stuff. And uh, the architecture was amazing, honestly. But, we actually have but, one of the biggest libraries in the world. Well... What they got now is an Olympia qualifier that, that's coming up, and this is important. Now, is Nathan competing? That's what I hear. So, if I'm not mistaken, he's already qualified, yes. right, for the Olympia because he, he did the Arnold over there and won. Mm -hmm. So, here's the problem. It's great that he's qualified and he keeps qualifying. And, and listen, winning shows is always great. But the, the big burning question right now for Nathan is, is can he get over here, you know, with visa issues and, and whatever? He's had some restrictions um, you know, he's had some legal stuff he was dealing with over there. If you can't get over here for the Olympia, it's kind of all for naught. I mean, it's nice and all, but uh, hopefully he's got all that straightened out. Could you imagine what he would have looked like at the Olympia, though? I think he well, did some really good... Uh, that's the million-dollar question, yeah, though, right? It, yeah. it, where does 100% Nathan Dasha fit, fit into that mix? Is he in there with Nick Walker and Absolutely. and and, uh, and Labrada and that crew? Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, who else was there? Uh, William? He was in that, that crew and, and um, Akeem. So all those guys were kind of fighting for those four, five, six, and seven spots. I think I think Nathan would be in that crew let me tell if you, he was competing. Okay, well, let me just throw this out there because I just got wind of this uh, a little bit ago. Ian Valier. Valier, yeah. Valier yes. with uh, Brett Wilkins. Yeah. Now, you remember Brett Wilkins? I like Brett Wilkins very much. That kid's got a phenomenal yeah. physique. Yeah. And he could do some damage at the Olympia. All those guys are going to be beating each other up for the next foreseeable future because that's that's kind of the next generation. Mm -hmm. Brett Wilkins and Ian Velier and, and Nathan, if, if he can get, get over here, um, it helps. Um, Hunter, Nick. I mean, you got some young some young guns here coming up. So, I mean, this is kind of what the landscape is going to be looking like the next, next couple of years. I think you'll see some of the old veterans kind of start to – Fade off, you know. I mean, they, they've held. Listen, they've been flying this flag for now, a while. When you say veterans like Rooley. You got like a Rooley Winkler. I, I don't know how much gas he's got left in the tank. I mean, he's been competing for some years. These guys are all in their late forties now. Mm -hmm. um, even a Sean Roden, even though we haven't been able to see him compete for the, the last couple of years due to his ongoing legal issues, I don't know how much gas is left in that tank. I mean, no. again, you're talking about a guy who's in his mid to late forties. Generally speaking, unless you're Dexter Jackson, as we've talked about. It doesn't really get better after that. You know I mean? It's going to be much, much harder to bring that type of a physique package, if you will, to the Olympia stage to compete with guys 20 years your junior. I really wonder if we're actually going to see Rooley at the Prague. What do you think? You um, I tell you this. If we do see Rooley at, competing in Prague, he's, he's really going to have to dial it down. Mm -hmm. uh, we have not seen the best Rooley Winkler. Now, again... Could be physical pro issues or problems. It could be, you know, uh, uh, joint related. I mean, listen, you can only hang on for so long. Right. At some point, you can't do the real heavy lifting or you just don't get the results from the diet. It changes. Um, and what you've been doing, what used to work, sometimes don't. Um, it's amazing. But you have, the body's always changing. They say it changes like every seven years, which kind of makes sense when you think about it. Seven years old. You know, you start getting that little growth spurt, right? Okay. 14, puberty, right? And all, you know, 14, 15, 21. No, that's I mean, when you started, right? 14 or 12? Uh, 13. I actually, okay. I started training at 12. Okay. I competed at 13 and then, you know, went from there. But I started at 21. Um, assuming that you're eight, you're, you, your body does foresee some sort of a changing, uh, as it would be about every seven, eight years, you know, give or take, it's about right. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know how much gas these guys got left in the tank, but I, I think you're going to, you're starting to see it already. Um, I don't think a lot of those guys you're going to see much over the next year or two. I think that that might be about it. But speaking of which, uh, so I see in your notes, 
uh, you've scribbled down. Uh, so you've stumbled on my uh, my article from oh, years yes. ago called, uh, what do I call it? <laughs> so, 30 things, 30 I've, things I've learned. 30 years. Yeah, 30 years. Probably got changed in <laughs> editing, yeah. Uh, 30 things I've observed in 30 years. Now, I know you found some of these amusing. Oh, I did, I did, absolutely. Um, but, uh, so I know you wanted some clarification on some of these. Oh, so if I could, I, if I could I, be of any assistance, I, I wrote found it. Some of them funny. I, I like number six. Now the first thing is all they're all true. Every single one of them, all thirty, are dead on the money. Well, I thought this one was really cute. All right, what do you got? My mother thinks I should have won every show I ever competed in. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's so sweet. Uh, first of all, yes, that's true. You know, she thought I should have beaten Ronnie Coleman. She's, you know, you're just so much better looking than he is. You know, it's like mom, it's a bodybuilding. You know, I know, but he's just too big. Like, Mom, it's a bodybuilding show, for God's sakes. It's like, yeah, that's uh, a... Really but right. I use that to this day, yeah, you're right. right? Because when people are bitching about the results, they're crying politics. Like, I mean, we, we've been dealing with this ever since the Olympia. Hottie should have won. Brandon should have won. This guy should have won. It kind of sums it all up, right? It's like, look, at, of course your fans and, and your wife or your girlfriend or your husband or whatever, of course they're going to think that they should have won. Mm -hmm. Why would they not think they're going to win, right? It's as biased as it gets. Sure. The judges, who don't give a crap, didn't think he should have won. How many people do we see on stage who look, excuse me for saying it, I'm just being honest, look, look really bad. Yeah, yeah. Because some friend has probably told them, you know, <laughs> hey, man, you're going to win. You're going to, and, you Yeah, know. these are trainers who should be shot or at least fired. Right. Um, most of these trainers, I hate to say this, but it's very true. You people, you really got to do your homework out there, okay? Just because somebody has competed once hmm. or twice does not make them a guru or a trainer or an expert. You actually mentioned that on here. Yeah, I'm the sure worst, that's... Uh, the worst bodybuilders make the best gurus and vice versa. The worst bodybuilders... Make the best gurus. That's true. Yeah, like, again, you got to go with the obvious, right? Rarely do you see a great bodybuilder turn into a great coach. But you know what? It's like that with all sports. It's like when Larry Bird years ago, when the in the NBA, one of the greatest basketball players of all time, became a coach, and he was horrible, horrible coach. You know, Magic Johnson. I mean, you can go right down the list, right? Most of these guys do not make great. Co they were great athletes, but you don't have to be. You don't have to have been a great athlete to be a great coach. And you'll you'll notice that. And again, in all sports, most managers and such, and, and uh, that type of thing, um, weren't particularly great. Some of them were decent. You know, you get the Mike Ditka's. Mike, Mike Ditka was a great player, and he, he made a great coach. So there are your exceptions, but for the most part, listen, people, do your homework, man. Get a trainer that's that's accredited, that knows what they're doing, that has a history of not put, putting people in peril. We're seeing a whole lot of that these days. Where, relationships you know, with food. Oh God, that's just listen. Is that new? Now I got to now I got to clear out a spot. Okay, <laughs> let me explain something to you, people. Listen, listen to me. Okay. Nobody has a relationship with food, okay? You have a relationship with your girl or your guy or, again, whatever side of the aisle you're on, okay? You don't have a relationship with food, okay? Why not? You're not dating a steak. Can't say I'm in a relationship with my steak. No. It's, again, this is the problem with people. It's the mentality, right? Your relationship with food. No, listen, you look at food. Bodybuilders, by and large, who are competing, okay? You're getting ready for a show. You don't even look at foods as food groups. You look at them as, as values. Mm -hmm. 30 grams of protein, right? Am I right? 200 grams right. of carbs, yeah. right? Yeah. They all have an assigned value. I don't care if it's sawdust and drywall that you're eating, okay? It doesn't make any difference. You don't care what it tastes like. This Again, now I'm going old school, okay? Because I, I, I got a problem. I don't want to get off on a rant here. But you are. But I will, Okay. The bottom line is dieting and the physiques. Like, how many times we keep seeing, right? The physiques were much better in the 90s. Right. Why don't we have that type of quality today? You know, like, what happened? You know, it's the drugs. It's this. It's, no, it's not any of that stuff. The same drugs were around then. Mm -hmm. It ain't anything different. They're not manufacturing new stuff that isn't as good, okay? Although there's probably a lot of bunk stuff well, out I mean, there I'm that sure probably isn't that stuff as good. Is made in grandma's basement. That's the thing, right? Don't ever buy anything from grandma's basement, okay? <laughs> so, or stuff that was made up in a Mexican bathtub. No offense to our friends in Mexico. Oh, my God. But the uh, the bottom line was this. The dieting was much harder. Okay? You know why it was harder? Because we didn't have all these things. We didn't have condiments. No. Listen. Sugar-free. You this. couldn't use anything. Okay? When I dieted, I'm going back old school, okay? You had oatmeal. That's what you had. There was no peanut butter in there. Oh, I'm going to get my fats. with Fats? There was no fats. 
No, I understand. You know, did, well, I'll take that back. There was fats. You left a yolk in with the eggs. Mm -hmm. That was where your natural fats were coming from. Every time I see a modern diet out there, and I wonder why. Now I'm thinking about it, right? And I see, like, especially these chicks getting ready for bikini shows, and I see this on the groups. Yeah, I'm into my, uh, you know, 11th month of prep. No. It's like 11 months. Let me just what were you, 400 this. pounds when you see started? This the bikini thing, okay? I'm drying out. No, there's no dry. If bikini you're drying guys, out a bikini, that means you got your hair dryer and you're drying out, you know, after the peak thing. Peak week. Oh, God, these, I just, I loathe every one of these things. Peak week. People you know training you know. your hammies. No <laughs> decent, oh, self respecting hammies. body on this earth has ever referred to their hamstrings why, as hammies. Why can you not say hammies for Because uh, it's stupid. It's like something regular people buy. You know what it's like? It's like when you used to get like the, the, the designer shirt was out years ago and it cost like $100 for this shirt. No, you, you know what you You got some of those. No. I got a whole box of them. I just donated, right? I got stuff that was stupidly priced, but it was trendy and it was expensive. You know when it's over? When you walk into Walmart or Target and you see that scene oh, see, or their rendition of it, right? Okay. You know, like like once it's scaled down to where you can buy it there, it's time for you to stop wearing it. Now, unfortunately, we, we both know people in this industry who are still wearing this stuff. Oh, yeah, we do. But, yeah, I just donated a box that was probably, correct me if I'm wrong, probably $3,000 worth of clothes. <laughs> probably more than that. Oh, than you. You're very listen, flashy. Listen, I had, I had Von Dutch. Huh? There's an old name for you. I, I had Ed Hardy, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Affliction, right? Listen, these t-shirts were not cheap, right? But the problem is, is now you can't wear it 10 years remember, later like an idiot. I remember going to the Arnold, and all you would see is a sea of Affliction shirts. <laughs> yeah, of course. Everybody yeah. had Affliction. Well, listen, that was the deal, right? I mean, well, all right, what else you got on there? Okay, let's see. Uh, if you think you know your body better than anyone, you're probably wrong. <laughs> yeah. Again, this is that that all comes back to somebody... Um, they know what's best for their body, right? Here's the funny part. Everybody that knows what's best for their body wakes up at 1 a.m. And, and they think they need sugar. Well, I just, I know my body needs it. Nobody ever woke up at 1 a.m. craving a chicken breast. No. You never heard that story, right? It's always sweet. Man, I woke up, it was like 2 a.m. And I was at, so, I, you know, I was just I was just dying for some egg whites. You don't hear that story, no. right? But they know what's best. Yeah, what's best was that chocolate ice cream that I get into. But Anyways, finishing my thought from before, though, that's why these people are taking so long to get prepared and get in shape because they got all these condiments, sugar-free this, sugar-free that. Uh, uh, you know, they got all these condiments that they use it on, on their stuff. Listen, that is not dieting, people. And it goes back to this, too. You also say the more you carve up, the softer you look, which people think, oh, I need more carbs. Carbs attract water. Yeah. Now, it's not an equal ratio either. It's four to one. Okay. Yes, the more carbs you bring in, it's like a sponge. It, the more it, it, it takes up uh, spade, it takes up water, right? It's going to attract water. So, yeah, you can only, quote, carb up so long. Most people, and if, if this isn't a, a uh, on my list, because there's 30 things here, which obviously, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do more as we, as we do future episodes. But um, the bottom line is this. Most people, 99.9% .9 of people look better depleted. Right. I agree with that. They think they curl up and some magic happens and it all fills out, but the skin stays set. No, it brings in water. You usually end up worse. You usually end up looking better before you did any of that stuff. Well, let me ask you something. What do you think of this term? Biceps are the boners of your arms. Boners, did you yeah, say? the boners of your arms. You know, bicep peaks, boner of your arms. You never said that? What kind of stupid ass. Who came up? Who comes up with these things? <laughs> That's what it's here, man. This is what people talk about. Never in my you life. Say that? No. All right, how about this? Uh, no. Can I buy you dinner and try you to stop oh, me? Oh, Lord. Buy Good dinner. Lord. You, and you get on me about my dad jokes and things. Yeah. And, uh, what about booty gains? Is that okay? Booty gains. Yeah. We'll let that one go. What yeah. about keep it tight? Natty? Natty? Yeah, Natty. I'm Natty. So I'm talking to John Natashack, I would use it. I call him <laughs> Natty, but. Crushing it? Even Natty's stupid. See, like that, right? He's a Natty. What, what is that? Marin? Do you know what Marin is? Marin? Like marinade? <laughs> what does that mean? It's like a mirror thing. You don't even know. No. Woke up like this. D-I-S? Yeah. This? this? Yeah, woke up like this. And that? D-A-T? Yeah. yeah. See, crushing I'm it, killing it. Is that crushing it. it. Oh, man. Yeah. Listen, okay. all these pale in comparison to stacked class. No. One of my all-time biggest pet peeves. Don't ever tell me. Anytime you see that, you know. Hey, just took... Just took 20th in a stacked class. It's like all you did was just justify why you got your ass handed to you. Okay? And when I look at the pictures, I ain't seeing a stat class. Again, and I've used this on my Instagram before. You want to see a stat class? 
Go look up the 91 Nationals. Well, one thing that's I, a stacked class, okay? I haven't really seen one like that since. That's how long it's been. Well, one of the things I do like, and I'm, I'm going to then we'll touch up on something else. All right, you sir. talk about, sir? Can you just call me sir? <laughs> just an expression. Oh, my God. I'm shame on you. Anyway, you talk about two people being in a class, and then the second person is the last. Yes. <laughs> if there's two of you in a class and you take second. So what about the second pro card? You're last. Wait a minute. What about the second pro card? Listen, what? I don't agree with the second pro card. Uh -huh. we, we've been over that. I know it's business. i got to bring it up. I get it. I understand why we do it, but i got to be honest. I don't agree with it. Okay. Tell me about the Lee Haney games. I know we had the Lee Haney experience. My man. Listen, what? there is no greater ambassador in the sport of bodybuilding. One of the greatest Mr. Olympics, if not the. He is the greatest of all time. Of all time, all right? I put him in the same category when I when I uh, exclaimed that Linda Murray was the greatest right. female bodybuilder of all time. Because it's more about just wins. Even though Ronnie Coleman has just as many, right, and all that. And Arnold's up there with seven and Phil Heath was seven. Right? You've got some great bodybuilders over time. Lee Haney, for all things included in that, I think you got to give consideration. Um, what he has done is he has got a great show here in Georgia that's coming up. Uh, this is seventh year he's actually put this on. Yep, yeah, seven years. And now it's evolved into the Lee Haney Games, which is a fantastic show, and it's got all kinds of other events with it and things. Uh, it's at the Georgia World Congress Center. Uh, it's coming up, LeeHaneyGames.com. Uh, but the coolest thing, as you mentioned to me the other day, so Lee is going to have his whole, the Lee Haney experience. Mm -hmm. He's going to have all eight of his sandals and all his trophies and stuff that yeah, he's won. Teenage America, Junior Nationals. How cool is that? Yeah. And I guess they're going to probably going to have some little setup or maybe it's in it's like an area. It's nice suite. Oh, listen, what I'm looking for, as, as a bodybuilding historian, I, I, I can't wait to see that myself because that's history. I mean, and it's history again from Lee Haney, Haney no winning, ever done that before, from winning either. the Teenage America, right. okay, to being our first NPC champion. Which is oh, he was the first. Very first. All right. Right? Nice. First national champ way back when the NPC first started. He's the guy. And then, obviously, on to the Olympia. He, you know, everybody knows the rest of it, right? This guy's a legend. Mm -hmm. um, but Which you talk I about a great show to attend. I will be there for the first time. Listen, I've got a lot of accolades. Arnold's, Olympia's for years, right? Been all over the world, you know, doing show. First time doing the Lee Haney's games. That, make, that makes me pretty happy to, uh, to be going there for Lee lending my voice to, to this uh, great competition. It's an NPC qualifier. Um, there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of athletes there, but if, if you're even remotely in the Georgia area or surrounding, if you can drive and get there, come on down, man. It's going to be a great time. There's, there's all kinds of celebs that are going to be there because Atlanta is a hot spot for these people. So maybe we can get see my man Rock Shabazz there or, or Shaq. Shaq himself. He likes to show up at these things, our, our biggest fan in the world. Yeah, what was interesting was uh, Lee was the ambassador, so he actually retired in Orlando yeah. at the last Olympia. So that was uh, interesting. Anyway, uh, what is it? LeeHaneyGames.com. LeeHaneyGames.com. November 13th. Com. Yeah, uh, November 13th. We'll get be there. Get tickets. We'll be there. You'll be there in attendance? I will definitely be there in attendance, of course. But Rockstar goes everywhere. Love the shows. Yes, you do. All right. Well, guess what? That's going to wrap it up. Man, this stuff goes real quick, doesn't it? What do you got there? Max out, max power. How about that? A little cheap shout out there for our own stuff, max power. We got it in stock. We got to get a special out this week. Let's let's put something out here special for any of those people that are watching this right now. We will put a special out just for you guys this week. Watch for that. Max out, pre-workout, three flavors. Best stuff you're ever going to try. What's three flavors? What's the three flavors? Uh, Fruit punch, orange, and blue raz. Blue raz. There you go. Yeah. I like the orange personally. I like the fruit punch. I like anything you guys are buying. So, All right. That's it. For Isabel Terrell, I'm Bob Chick. See you guys next time. Bye.